But we are so hyper competitive about everything, aren't we? We compete over fucking everything. We compete over our universities, right? My school is better than your school. Go fight otters. <laughs> what? Otters don't care about fighting. Okay, otters care about looking cute, eating fish, and predatory birds. <laughs> Even my community does it, right? The minority community, we do it. We compete over who's got it worse. That's what we compete over. Right? <laughs> who's got it worse? The blacks or the Chinese? Fuck, I don't know. Well, they both had to deal with slavery in this country. They both worked on some kind of railroad. And they've both done some phenomenal work with chicken over the years. <laughs> <laughs> I don't fucking know. Who cares, right? Oppression is oppression. Slavery is slavery. Maybe we learn from our past mistakes and move forward to make a better future for ourselves. Is that the important lesson to take out of all of this? You know, it's ridiculous. And look, the problem is we haven't gotten over oppressions, and we definitely still have slavery in our society. It's just masked. You know, internships are still around. <laughs> internships are just white-collar slavery. That's basically what it is. Right? Look, I can't buy top ramen on experience. I'm going to need $2.95. <laughs> Prison slavery is still a reality in this country. Yeah. We have prison slavery in our country. That's how we've circumvented it, you know? Prisoners are paid like $4 an hour for the hard labor that they do. It's fucking ridiculous to me. We gotta pay these people what, they, what, what, what they're supposed to be earning. They fought fires in California and they got a dollar an hour, a fucking dollar an hour to fight fires that probably rich people cause, right? Like that's. What they were fucking out there doing, and then when they get out of prison, they can't be firefighters. What the fuck? We still have this in our society. It's completely ridiculous. When I bring this point up, some people get mad at me, right? People go, Chris, those are, those are criminals and deviants and desperates and jaywalkers and potsmakers. <laughs> How dare you, sir? <laughs> We need to treat them like people. Being in prison is the fucking punishment. They should be learned, they should be taught how to redeem themselves and come back and join society. But because the prison system doesn't fucking do that, when they come out, they don't know how to deal with the reality of society. All they know is, is the mental health issues that they face in prison, the tough challenges that they face in prison. So they go back into prison. It's called recidivism. It's like recycling prisoners. Right? It's the only green initiative America believes in. <laughs> and we still have slave masters in this country, right? Jeff Bezos is still around. <laughs> Look, I understand we probably have some prime members in here, you know? I get it. But I feel like Jeff Bezos just has a fetish that he like doesn't understand how to take care of. Like, you know, like, I think his fetish is, like, he's got a pee fetish. That's why he times his workers on how long they get to take a pee break. And it's just like, Jeff, there's so many websites. Some of them probably have ads on your website, bro. <laughs> Go look them up. You're just, you're just weird and nobody cares about it. You fucking Monopoly man looking asshole. Like, <laughs> you know, nobody, nobody wants a drone to be like, you are 10 seconds over. <laughs> You know, and like fire you into a packing box. <laughs> it's not how you treat workers. This guy's a fucking, he's not a, he's not a corporate CEO. He's a fucking slave master. That's what he really is. Pay your fucking taxes, Jeff. Yeah. $175 $175 billion, zero in taxes. How do you fucking do that? You're not a fucking CEO. You're a fucking slave master. That's what we're living in right now. Uh, Neo-feudalism is what it's called, right? Some people are calling it neo-feudalism. Right? Feudalism was the era where there were kings and serfs and the church. Uh, and now what we're living in is like a new version of that, right? We've replaced potato farms with server farms. We've replaced the castle with a warehouse. We've replaced the moat with just like a sea of broken desktop monitors. <laughs> we haven't gotten over our, our options with oppression and, and you know, uh, slavery in, our, in, this, in this country. We're traumatized by it, which is another thing that we compete over, right? Our own traumas, we compete over that. I'm, I'm guilty of this. I've done this. Right. I was in Austin, Texas a couple years back, and I was hanging out with another comedian. His name's Jay White Cotton. 
Dre's an incredible comic and a very frustrating human being. <laughs> you guys know those people where you're just like, you're so good at what you do, but as a person, you're just, oh my god, you know, like, I love it. <laughs> so we're hanging out outside his apartment, and it's like 4 o'clock in the morning, right? And now some secrets are starting to come out, you know? Some shit that I'm not going to reveal at 11 a.m. You know, these, these are not brunch conversations, my friends, <laughs> right? And Jay, Jay and I start talking about shitty dads, because we both have shitty dads. And he, he tells me a story where he goes, you know, my dad used to break into my brother and I's room, drag us out of bed, and then beat the shit out of us when he was drunk. Mm. And I was like, oh yeah? Well, my dad <laughs> locked me in the kitchen, a little metal spatula till it was red hot, and burnt the back of my leg, and he was sober. <laughs> Nobody won in that situation. <laughs> there are no fucking winners in this. Right? Nobody came out and was like, wow, that's quite the trauma, Chris. Here's a chalice full of your to my tears, my liege. Like, <laughs> you know, Jay wasn't like, king proprietor of sadness, Chris Mullen, everybody. What Jay should have said is, I prescribe you a thousand hours of therapy to start and an unending hug. Let's just hug each other <laughs> like our parents never did. <laughs> Oh, it's okay. We're all right. We got through it. You know, we're we're doing fine. We travel around the country seeking the validation of strangers to make sure that <laughs> the void in our hearts are filled. We're doing fine. We're doing. We love you. Oh, thank you. Oh. <laughs>